This Lenovo laptop looks pretty nice, and it can be purchased on Amazon for only $200. But it struggles to perform even the most basic web browsing at a reasonable speed. This is another Lenovo laptop, and this one is from 2010, so it's pretty old. But while it is somewhat slow, it ends up being significantly more usable than this newer Lenovo laptop. And yes, the newer Lenovo laptop does have a damaged screen. But for the sake of this video, just pretend it's not damaged. This new laptop struggled quite a bit to reach the YouTube homepage. When I clicked on a video, it struggles to get running smoothly. Although, once the video gets going, it plays at a 144p resolution quite smoothly. But let's see what happens if I increase the quality to 720p. That's a smooth SPF. Meanwhile, the old Lenovo laptop is able to open and play the video reasonably quickly with a 1080p playback. So what gives? Why would the older Lenovo laptop seem much quicker than this newer one? Well, it's not because the processor is some rare government prototype powerhouse. No, the processor in this computer is just a basic mid-range dual-core i5 processor from 2010. In fact, there were many other processors from that time that were much more powerful than the one in this laptop. The reason why this newer Lenovo laptop is so slow is that it has a very underpowered Celeron processor, only 2GB of non-upgradable RAM, and Windows 10 installed on a horribly cramped 32GB of slow eMMC storage. And there are many other laptops from many other brands that also have very underpowered specs. Some of you might think that it's obvious that this computer would be slow and barely usable. But for someone who knows very little about computers, you may have no idea what these specifications mean. And just because someone doesn't understand what this means doesn't mean that they're any less smart than someone that does. Some people are just brilliant experts at something else. But they might not even realize that researching what computer they're going to buy is even important. Someone might assume that just because this is a new computer, that means that it would be fine for just basic browsing and office tasks. And I think that's a completely reasonable assumption to make, since many people would view a computer just as an appliance. Also, some people just can't afford a better laptop, and they need a cheap laptop just to get by. Well, something to consider is that even in these new laptops, these processors are actually pretty old. Even the newer Celeron N4020 is from 2019. What this means is you can get a laptop with the exact same processor in it, used or refurbished. So if you really just need a cheap computer, let it actually be cheap. Don't pay $250 for a piece of garbage. Instead, pay $50. If you buy something like this Chromebook with Chrome OS instead of Windows, it can be a lot more usable since Windows takes up a lot more resources than Chrome OS. It can be decent enough to scroll through social media, watch a video on YouTube, apply for a job, and do other casual browser-based activities. One major downside is that older Chromebooks may not have the latest software and may become more and more limited as time goes on. Linux would also run adequately on a computer like this, while doing more than Chrome OS and using less resources than Windows. Linux can be great for some people, while it could also be very intimidating for others. If you're curious, you could do some of your own research to see what Linux has to offer. Enough playing devil's advocate with the Celeron. In general, I would say it's best to just completely avoid any computer with a Celeron if you can afford to. If you just want to buy a computer that runs well with Windows for basic web browsing and light office tasks, an Intel i3 or AMD Ryzen 3 and 8GB of RAM should be good enough for those tasks. However, if you're the type of person who likes to have a lot of tabs open, you might want to get a computer with 16GB of RAM, 
which would usually be paired with an i5 or Ryzen 5. It could also be a great bang for your buck if you buy a used computer instead. Here are some different CPU models that are still great today and are significantly more powerful than any Celeron. If you already have an old computer that already has an i5 or an i7, if it's slow, it might be because you have one of these in there when you could be using one of these. This is a hard drive and this is what stores all the files on your computer. This is a solid state drive and it does the same job as a hard drive except it does it much, much faster. Upgrading your computer to a solid state drive can significantly improve the performance of your computer. You can look up how to do it on your own, but if you don't want to deal with the hassle, you'd always look for a local computer repair shop and they could do it for you. They could clone your old files from the hard drive and put them on the SSD, and then you would just continue to use your computer the same way you've been using it, except it's much, much faster. And as you've seen with my 2010 laptop, it won't be as fast as newer computers, but it could still be decently usable for some basic tasks. While this laptop is being sold as a new laptop, it's actually from 2018. And back then, 2GB of RAM was the minimum requirement to run Windows 10. But now, with Windows 11, the minimum requirement is at least 4GB. As Windows keeps getting more and more bloated, the minimum requirements for Windows will most likely change again in the future. Devices like this will end up obsolete much faster than more powerful laptops sold today. So devices like this end up in landfills and waste a lot of time and money from people who buy them. I hope this video was informative. If you aren't interested in learning more about computers, then you should not subscribe. However, if this video was helpful, you could consider giving a like. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you have a good day.